And may I now request the guest of honor, Ms. Devjani Ghosh, President NASCOM, to address the audience. You know, they say that uh, certain times in life, and I guess most of you as entrepreneurs will totally get this, you have to take that leap of faith, right? This, for me, is that leap of faith, speaking right after someone I absolutely adore, I worship, I respect, my role model and Chandra. Adul, seriously, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's one of those really crazy moments for me, so. Great to be here, great to be here with all of you. And before I start, a quick show of hands, how many of you are entrepreneurs in this room? Oh, you can feel the energy, you can really feel, you know something special here. It's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm gonna start with a little story, and I don't know if the story is true or not, but having spent some time in Israel, I do believe it's true. So for all of you who are tech entrepreneurs, and I think most startups, you would, I guess, see Israel as a country that has really got its startup act right. I mean, they're in the business of churning out not just great startups, but excellent startups, the best startups. And there's a lot of discussion on what's the secret sauce? Does anyone here know what's the secret sauce of Israel's startup success? Military services, any other guesses? Agri-tech, farming. Well, according to the Israelis, and this comes from uh, the person who's been uh, pretty much at the center of their startup initiative, the secret sauce of Israel's startup success is the Jewish mother. And you men should know by now that the secret sauce of anything that's successful is usually a woman. So, <laughs> yeah. so why? Why is the Jewish mother the secret sauce behind their success? Because the mother obsesses, unlike other mothers that we know, not just with what the son becomes or how well he gets married and things like that. But the Jewish mother's obsession is that the son must win a Nobel Prize. And that's the obsession that the child grows up with. And by the way, I'm hoping that it moves from son to daughter very soon. Uh, Israel also has its problems, but uh, right now, it, or at least a few years back, it was the son. And it was about winning the Nobel Prize. That passion for excellence. You cannot be anything but the best. You have to bring the best back to the country. And I think therein lies a little bit of a lesson for us in India. We obsess with numbers. And, and yeah, we are a large country, 1.3 billion people. So yeah, give it to us. We have to obsess with numbers. But that obsession with numbers is only going to take us a little bit ahead. It's not going to take us to the point where we ideally should aim to be at. And that is the point of being the best in something. I think in India, we have to shift the mind post. We have to stop worrying about whether we are the second largest, the third largest, the, the largest, or whatever it is, base of startups. I think we have to start worrying about, are we the best? And what does it take to be the best? Because I've never heard that in conversations in my last six or seven years that I've been in India. I've never heard a conversation that says, we have to be the best. I did hear that conversation once, and that was in my discussion in ISRO, where we were talking about space science, and this was before NASCOM while I was at Intel. We were talking about space, and ISRO was very clear, they have to be the best. But that mindset? is not normal. It's not the norm in India. We're happy being the largest. We're happy having the numbers. How do we change this mindset? What does it take to be the best? I think the first thing is focus, right? You cannot be the best in everything. If you want to be the best, you have to pick your battles. You have to pick that area where you can go out and beat everybody else in the world. And you really invest in that area to build the strengths. 
what are those areas? What, what, what should be the opportunities? How many of you startups, the tech startups, are, are really excited about what's happening with voice right now? No tech startups in the room? Okay, a few hands. Voice is the next big thing. Think of it from an India perspective, where uh, most of our citizens, once you cross the urban towns, um, may not be even literate, may not know how to read and write. Think about the potential of voice. And by the way, a hidden fact, do you know which is the country where Alexa gets the highest number of summons? India. India. In India, there's a, there's a person who every one minute or two minutes says, I love you, Alexa, by the way. Just, that's another fact, right? But, but we are a country that's built for voice. Voice has to be the main driver in our country. And imagine the possibilities when those voice assistants on our phone recognize Hindi, recognize Tamil, recognize Marathi, recognize Telugu. Imagine the possibilities. Imagine what it can do to search, to e-commerce, to healthcare, to education. You know, at NASCOM, we were so excited and we are so excited. I strongly believe voice is the next big frontier in technology. We we're so excited, we just said, let's, let's go and search for those companies in India, startups in India, that are really working in this space and let's figure out what we can do with them. So we had a citizen voice challenge with the government. You know, every monkey bath phone call that the uh, broadcast the prime minister does, the government ends up with millions and millions of phone calls. Big citizens are calling in to tell them what's working and what's not. What do they do with the data? Today, nothing, because the data is all voice and it's in so many different languages. So there was a brilliant problem for us to solve. How do, we, how do we make sense of this? How do we create insights? And how do we pass it on to the government real time? So we decided, let's do a search. Let's get all the companies that are working on voice, NLP, together. In a country of 1.3 billion, supposedly the third largest startup ecosystem in the world, we found less than 60 companies. And this is the big thing. And this is why I worry. So, again, I do believe it's time for us to stop obsessing about the numbers and for us to start figuring, figuring out where is India going to be the best. And in that journey, you know, if we look at a compass or we look at a framework, I think there are five things that really matter today. Because technology, the pace of technology, it's not technology. Technology has been around all these years. What is different in your and my lifetime? We have the front row seats to this fascinating uh, dynamics that's playing out. That's the pace of technology. The pace of technology is something we have never seen before. In fact, by 2025, technology is going to cross the exponential barrier. How many of you know the meaning of exponential? Few hands up, what does it mean? Yep. No limit. Infinite. In very simple English, it means something will double. So if I take 30 steps and each step is one feet, how many steps? How many feet do I cover? 30 feet, right? If I take exponential steps, then it becomes one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, on and on. How many feet do I cover in 30 feet, 30 steps? Thank you very much. <laughs> it's around a billion feet. That's the difference between incremental and exponential. Today, if we're really honest, what we do are doing in the startup ecosystem, majority of it is incremental. It's a large part of it is incremental. We want to play safe. We look at areas where people have succeeded, and we want to go in there and change this and change that so we get our advantage. Where are those startups that are taking those exponential steps? That's what we need in India. It's, and, and, and what that is doing is it's completely changing the game plan. It's completely changing the rules of doing business in India. 
And if you want to play in this, this new world, and you want to be the best in this new world, I think there are five things that you have to keep in mind. There may be more, but to me, these five are the most important. The first and the most important, trust. If this world is dealing on data, if this world is dependent on data, I'm going to give you my data only if I trust you. It's just simple. You may offer me convenience, but convenience is now becoming a commodity. Everybody is giving me convenience. There are five, five guys who are, who are willing to send a taxi to my doorstep. So I'm going to give you my data if I trust you. If you worked hard to earn my trust, and if you show me that you're capable of keeping my trust, it's becoming extremely important. Trust is going to make or break companies. Value of a company is no more going to be its balance sheet or the physical assets. Value of the company is going to be the trust that that company has. And we are seeing it play out in front of our eyes. Right? So trust is my number one uh, compass. The second, how fast you move, agility. Today, it's no more about the big fish eating the small fish. You can see it. The small fish is disrupting the big fish. It's about the fast fish. The fast fish is pretty much going to eat everyone else in the system. How fast do you adapt? How fast do you move? Voice is sitting there. Voice is screaming at us. Voice is saying, I'm the next big thing. God bless those 65 that have decided to invest in that area where nobody else is investing in. And I think they're going to reap tremendous benefits, or at least some of them who've really got a good solution are. The rest of you who are waiting, by the time it's all established and you feel comfortable jumping in, it's too late. So how fast do you seize an opportunity? How fast do you move? That's the next big thing for me. The third one, scale. In today's world, it's scale that matters more than anything else. Gone are the days of POCs. POCs, honestly, do not count. They don't matter anymore. It's about how do you figure out scale from day one? How do you build scale into the design of your startup? And what do you have to do differently to think that way? I think that's becoming increasingly important. The fourth one for me is talent. Um, you know, just, just three days back, I learned a new skill, bilingual. I knew bilingual, but I learned it with respect to tech talent. And I heard from somebody who's a very strong influencer in the digital transformation world that today's talent has to be bilingual. They have to have domain expertise and tech expertise, and that's what companies need. And we were like, okay, so that's what we have to work on. Three days later, just yesterday, I was sitting with somebody else um, who, who's an expert in this area, and he said, no, Dipjani, bilingual is not enough. You also need the soft skills. So if there's a world called trilingual, that's it. You have to. So you know the, the, the need for skills is just changing. I don't know how many of you have seen, but MIT came out with the job rep, uh, requisition for data scientists. It's just the most mind-blowing thing you can see out there. You have tech, tech expertise. You have domain expertise. You have to be a great communicator. You have to be a great collaborator. You have to have empathy. I'm like, oh my god, how? But that's the reality of the world we are living in. And that's, that's what we have to embrace. So the learning part for us is just about beginning, guys. It hasn't even got started. How do we embrace that? How do we build on that? And then the last one uh, in, that, in my five compass uh, that I look at is experience. It doesn't matter today you're creating a product or a service. I know you obsess about it. I know we all obsess about our creations. But it doesn't matter. What matters is the experience your user's going to get, or the experience your user's having right from the time they find you on the App Store, to the time they download you, to the time they use you, to the time they recommend you to a friend. The entire value chain, the experience that you are creating, I mean, Coming from a tech background, I love acronyms, and this is my acronym for it, is TASTE. And it, you, you have to have focus, and you have to play by the new rules, which is defined by these five things. Uh, trust, agility, scale, experience, and talent. You know, it's extremely important. Again, the question is, why can't we? 
Why can't we embrace this new world, the new challenges, the new opportunities, and really take a goal to make Indian startup ecosystem the best in XYZ? You choose XYZ. You choose, you choose problems that are big for India, because if a problem is a big for India, it'll be big for the world. Do not forget, we, we are pretty much one third or maybe half, I don't know, where, but a large percentage of the world. So let's, let's pick those problems. But I think what I would leave behind at all for the next two days of conversation is um, let's not obsess with what's our rank in, in, in terms of how large the startup ecosystem is. We're already very big, so it's great. Let's now start some serious obsession about where do we become the best. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Ms. Ghosh, for sharing your key mantras on being number one, being the best, and pursuing excellence. With that, uh, I would request Harish Ji to please step forward and felicitate Ms. Ghosh. I request Atul ji, yes, to please step forward and felicitate Ms. Ghosh. And what an inspiring, inspiring speech. Key takeaways, trust, agility, scale, talent, and experience. And now,